Welcome to the Mystic Access Podcast, where the magic is in learning. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Mystic Access Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Kim. And I'm Lisa. We are now in the month of August. We are, and we have some fun things coming up for you in this month of August. First and foremost, our iOS modules are going very nicely. We're really enjoying sharing the information with you, and I tend to be the editor of these things, so I get to hear them before you guys do, and after Lisa actually creates them. So we all kind of take our own different tasks with these, and it's very much a team effort, and it's a lot of fun sharing this info. We just had a great class as of the recording of this podcast last night on wrangling the rotor which was fun we got lots of great questions and it's a lot of fun sharing the information we have two more modules coming up in this series of six one on email and utilizing it on your iDevice and one on the app store and Lisa can share a bit more about those I don't know that there's a whole lot more to share I really like email on the iPhone some people do some people don't I find, especially if I have a lot of messages, I will go through and delete the fluff off my email using my iPhone because it's just fast and very productive. We'll be talking about setting up email so that you can get it on your phone. We won't go into specific internet service providers and such, but we will touch on the basics and help you get the tools you need to get started. And then we talk about the App Store. We're going to talk about how to search for and purchase apps and to keep apps up to date. This is really important because they do change. Security things can change in an app. And right now, as we're getting ready for a new version of iOS, there are a lot of app updates. I update regularly, and yesterday when I opened the App Store, it said I had nine updates and I had just had 11 like two days before so they are coming fast and furious right now and it's really important to know how to do all that stuff so that you can keep your device up to date and secure and so that you can find and get those fun and helpful apps that you might be hearing people talk about and I'm sure as part of this class there will be a bit of discussion on apps and accessibility which is always fun and seems to always come up in every class we do on any app <laughs> that tends to be out there. So I'm sure a yes. little bit of that will show up in the discussion as well. And Lisa, do you want to share dates with these? Because I know we have a free class coming up as well and so we want to make sure people know when is which thing so they'll know what to do. Sure, if you just keep Thursdays in mind, that's when our classes are, at least right now. This coming Thursday will be August 16th, and that is our email class. Then the class on August 23rd is the class about the App Store. On August 30th, we have a free class from Mystic Access, and we'll be talking to you about that. The first Thursday in September, you get to relax because we are taking a bit of a break and gearing up and we will be offering another set of six modules starting in October and we will be announcing those to you on an upcoming podcast. Absolutely. Remember that if you want to sign up for either of these next two modules, they are $15 or you can sign up for both of them for $30 if you wish. And you can visit the link in our show notes to do that. Or you can give us a call at 716-543-3323. We can help you out with that as well. Speaking of things that are now accessible or iOS apps and app updates, somewhere along the way, I don't know if it was the latest version of iOS or some rendition of the Hulu app. But when I went into the Hulu app not too long ago, I found out that it is accessible. I mean, I was able to play things and do things with the Hulu app that I wasn't able to do before. When I went into the Hulu app before, I would see the tabs and the button and something else, but now I can do a little bit more within the Hulu app. 
one of the things about our cord cutting class that we talked about back in April was how accessible Hulu was on everything but iOS, and that has seemed to no longer be the case. Yeah, that's one of those things about app accessibility that you kind of have to look out for. Sometimes things get better, sometimes they get worse, and sometimes they stay about the same. So it's really important if you have favorite apps to kind of monitor what they're doing and get an idea of what's working and what's not working so that you will know and see if there's a workaround if you're having problems. If you are unfamiliar with Hulu, as Chris said, we did hold a class earlier this year on cutting the cord accessibly and the cord being cable. (laughs) For those of you who still have it and utilize it, we shared a lot of affordable alternatives for you and ways that you could check out programming of interest to you without having cable. So if you're interested in checking that out, that is available. We'll link to that and you can check that out. Definitely our biggest class to date and we had a lot of fun sharing it with you. One of the funny things that uh, I was able to do just as an aside because of the cord cutting class, I'm on a social network called Nextdoor, which is a social network for your local neighborhood. And it's really kind of cool. The thing that somebody was asking was about DirecTV and they wanted to know should they cancel their cable and go with DirecTV and they wanted to know if they were going to run into weather issues. And these were sighted people. These had nothing to do with accessibility. And so I said, well, you know, you might want to try DirecTV now. You know, you'd need a Roco device or whatever. And the person comes back and she says, I have a Roco device. And it took me five minutes to set up DirecTV now. And I'm happy and I'm saying goodbye to my cable. If we hadn't done this class back in April, I wouldn't have known of all the different options that were available myself. So I was able to help a neighbor. That's very cool. And if you're curious or confused at this point by what is a Roku and what is Hulu and what is DirecTV now, and if you're interested in learning more about how you can maybe make your own entertainment experience a little more affordable and accessible for you, definitely consider checking that out. We do have a class on the Roku devices as well, which is one of those set-top boxes, kind of like an Apple TV or a Fire TV. It's just a little box that connects using your internet, and you can get all sorts of entertainment options using it. So if you're interested in that, we offer that, and we'll link to that as well in the show notes. Lots of fun things you can check out in Mystic Access Land, and those are only a couple of them. And speaking of fun things to check out in Mystic Access Land, Lisa alluded a moment ago to our free class for August. We're really looking forward to it. It is a sequel, or a sister class, as it were, to our class in July. And our class in July was how to download files from the internet using Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Chrome. So we are going to be expanding that, and we did talk a bit about downloading for mobile devices as well. We are going to have that up on our free downloads page shortly if you want to check it out as a prequel to August class. And our August class is going to be all about how to manage those files. What do you do with them once you have them? How do I maintain them? How do I get them where I want them? How do I delete them if I decide I don't want them? We're going to talk to you all about that and how it works and obviously give you demonstrations as well. We're looking forward to sharing that with you. And again, that free class falls on August 30th, which is, of course, a Thursday, which seems to be our typical night to hold classes. So August 30th, Thursday. And if you want the information for that, you need to be signed up to our events list. So you can do that on any page of the site. You'll see some checkboxes. And those will sign you up for our lists. You will need to give your consent that you want to be signed up. Our MA news list provides lots of news on what's going on at MA. And the events list is the one that actually gives you the joining information for our free classes. So if you want to know when they're coming up and have the information to join them, you can sign up for the events list and we will send that out to you the week of the free class. So stay tuned for that. And if you need any assistance, let us know. We'll be happy to get you subscribed and get you the information you need. I don't know about you, but I really love summer. And one thing that I like, especially about this time of year, is all the wonderful fruits and vegetables. Yeah, there's ice cream and there's other stuff like that too, but there are so many good for you things in the summer. And so many people start their efforts or renew their efforts to live healthily in January. And that's fine, but it's like, To me, the sweet spot is in the summer because, 
I mean, I've been eating cucumbers and strawberries and blueberries, and I got a vegetable spiralizer. And I have been having more fun with that than should be allowed. It's kind of like a Play-Doh fun factory for adults. Um, you crank it and zucchini noodles come out. Well, of course, if you have a zucchini. If you don't have a zucchini and you have something else, then other stuff will come out. Although, unfortunately, if you put an apple in there and you crank it, mush will come out. I don't think it was grabbing the skin very well or something. Any kind of zucchini, squash, cucumbers... It just makes these lovely noodles and spirals and things. But one of the things that I have done this summer is really kind of recommitted to trying to make healthier choices. And one of those involves the dreaded five-letter word, scale. 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 And we actually have been talking a lot here at Mystic Access lately about scales. Kim and I have each recently acquired a scale. I'm not going to demo mine for you because there's really not much to hear. Mine is a little Bluetooth scale and I really like it because it's tiny. I mean, I'm supposed to be monitoring my weight pretty regularly anyway because I retain a lot of fluid. And so if I were going away, let's say for a month and I felt I needed to, I could pack this scale. It's tiny. Setting it up on the app, took every skill I thought I had and maybe didn't, I don't know. It was not terribly accessible. Let's just say we won't be showing this one as an example in our iOS module, <laughs> but it was very iffy and actually I had gone to Harrisburg and I took it with me and asked my niece to look it up and help me finish setting it up. I guess I just hadn't given it enough time because she said, oh, it looks like it's ready to go. She was reading this stuff on the screen and I'm saying, I didn't have that before. Now she did have to switch it for me because it wouldn't do it. Although I wonder now if it would have done it and it just didn't let me know that it was switched. But she did have to switch it from kilograms to pounds. But it's very cool because even though the app was a pain to set up, now when I weigh, I can see everything. It shows me weight, of course, and BMI because it gets my height from Apple Health and I think it has an app as well for Android which I have not played with but I believe it does. So it will give me weight and BMI and the amount of fat, the amount of muscle, the amount of water. What is and, BMI for those that don't know? Oh it's body mass index. It's basically they compute this formula that takes into account your weight and your height. And it's kind of a ratio type thing. Yeah, it is. I was going to say that, and then I thought, is it technically? And my math phobia. Oh, I have terrible <laughs> math phobia, so no so, one listen to me. Yeah. I could be completely <laughs> no, off base. It is. it is basically a ratio. And I don't really know, to be honest with you, how accurate that stuff is. How can they really tell all that just from scale. standing on it on your bare feet? Yeah. But... It's kind of fascinating anyway, because I do have these issues with fluid. I'll be interested to see if the amount of water that they say that I am holding onto varies from day to day or, you know, how accurate it is. I'm having some fun kind of playing with that, although, as I said, getting it set up, not so much. But that scale, if you are interested, is made by Yunmai, Yunmei. Y-U-N-M-A-I, and we'll have a link in the show notes. But Kim has a demo for us. She actually has something to demo, because her scale will speak to us. It will, and, and it'll speak in multiple languages. Yes, <laughs> and mine will speak, but it's just, it's over the iPhone. We've all heard that, and as I said, the app was hairy enough that I just didn't want to go there, but I'm very anxious to hear this demo of Kim's scale. These, I should mention, are both body weight scales. These are not food scales. Yes, absolutely. In fact, mine, I think anything less than like 12 pounds, it will not weigh. So you can try and you can try, but it's not going to work for you. <laughs> Unless you're weighing a big turkey, you're out exactly. of Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it might work for that. Or a humongous bag of flour or sugar or something like that. It might work for that, but... Generally speaking, it's not going to work. And it might be seven pounds, something like that. I can't remember. And I may say in the demo, I often marvel at the fact that sometimes the people you know are kind of on similar or parallel journeys to what you're on. Because Lisa and I have had a lot of heart-to-hearts this summer about weight and loss and getting healthier and better shape and blah. And we've exchanged 
cool ideas and fun things to nibble on and things like that over the course oh, of the yeah. summer. It's been oh, fun. Yeah. So it's always fun when your friends are kind of on a similar trajectory to you in terms of doing some of this stuff. Because not only can you be supportive, but you can find out some really cool ideas. So I just got a very basic scale because I knew what I wanted was just to kind of find out about weight. And then I could find out other ways of finding out other things like heart rate and caloric intake and all these things that I knew I wanted to do. So my scale is very basic. And it works very well. So you'll get to hear about it in this demo. Hey guys, welcome to this demo of the Taylor Talking Bathroom Scale. For many years, I have not owned a scale because I have really not wanted to know. As of recently, though, I was beginning to feel tired and out of sorts and decided, you know, I should probably just bite the bullet and do it. And it'll be a good podcast demo as well. And I'm really glad I did it because it was a wake-up call and it reminded me of something that I probably subconsciously knew, which was I needed to start working to get myself healthier, which I am. And so having this little scale has been great in that regard. And it's just kind of necessary, I feel, for good health to check one out every now and again. It's not the only item to use to assess your health, certainly, but it's a good indicator or can be one of a string of indicators to keep in mind in terms of figuring out how healthy you are. Lecture over. I'm going to tell you about this scale. I got this for $32. It's tempered glass. It's very nice. Very nice high quality scale. It has a 12.2 inch top where you stand so your surface is nice and it's got a really nice display on top that is apparently really nice and clear toward the front of the scale. It also has a little speaker grill on the top near the front of the scale as well. So it's to the left of your display. Actually, there are two speakers now that I look. There's one to the left and one to the right. It speaks five languages. It speaks English, Spanish, German, Greek, and Croatian. And it speaks in a pleasant female voice. All of the languages other than English will give your weight in kilograms and English will give in pounds. And this scale holds up to 400 pounds. So a lot of people will be able to utilize it. The large over a foot top standing surface makes it very easy to step on and off. And it's low to the ground. I also really like the fact that underneath it has little feet. Little rubber feet to keep it steady. And the other thing I really like about this scale is if you have company and you need to do a weigh-in every week, like I'm now doing on the weight loss program I'm utilizing, then if you need privacy, you can turn your volume down. Or if you're hard of hearing, you can turn the volume up. And I'll show you the volume in a second. The scale is battery powered and it runs off of three AAA batteries. You can pretty easily figure out where they go. They go kind of on the bottom of the scale near the same location where your button and switch are located. So you can find it pretty easily and the battery compartment just pops open and you drop the batteries in and you're good to go. The batteries go in, I think, traditionally, if I recall properly. So your part with the spring goes next to the flat part of your battery and vice versa. The scale is very easy to use. Now, that being said, a little caveat here. I found that depending on where you stand on the scale, and this hasn't just happened to me because I've had someone else test it too, (laughs) depending on where you stand on the scale, it will give you different readings. So I was hashing this out with someone, and we discovered that probably the best way to stand on it is with your heels fairly close to the back end of the scale, and then your feet pointed straight ahead. Now, when you stand on a scale, you want to stand centered on the weighing surface. And you want to stand still. Don't move around. Give it time to register your weight. If you stand too far up, you're going to be standing on the display, which you definitely don't want to do. The other thing that kind of brought to my attention this thing about standing with your heels close to the back of the scale is because I just tested this with some weights. Because I sure as heck am not standing on this scale for you guys to hear how much I weigh. Not happening. (laughs) So I brought some weights in and I'm going to utilize those. And what I noticed was I had to put three of them on the scale and some of them were further forward and it gave me two pounds wrong, which is exactly what I tend to get if I'm too far forward. It makes me two pounds heavier and I definitely don't want that. (laughs) So 
I'm going to just attempt to experiment with it and show you some things about it. So the first thing I want to do is show you what happens when you get it ready and how you get it ready, how you calibrate it, because this is a digital scale, so it doesn't require a lot of love, is you just can use your foot or your hand and press firmly on the top surface. And you hear that little beep, and then you can step on it and weigh yourself. Now, after a couple seconds, if you have not, in fact, stepped onto the scale, it will go off automatically, and here's what that sounds like. You get two beeps. So one, when you calibrate, and two, when it goes off. It has an auto shut off. I really, really like that. Now, I wouldn't step on it like the second you hear that beep. Don't be stepping on it while it's beeping that one beep. Give it just a second because it needs to flash down to zero. And of course, we can't see that happening. So you need to be able to just hang on just a second before you step on there. So that gives you an idea of the amount of time you have. It's just a few seconds between turning it on and when the auto shut off kicks in if you aren't in fact standing on it. So rather than using the weights I have here, because we don't necessarily need an accurate weight at this moment, I'm just gonna play with this a little bit, just using my foot or my hand or something and giving you some ideas. But first thing I wanna do is show you the volume. It's on the back and it's sort of centered but a little further to the right. You're gonna find two controls. On the left, you're gonna find a button. On the right, you're going to find the knob. The other thing to note about this knob is you can turn it completely off. Let me show you. If you turn it to the right, you can turn the sound completely off. So if you have sighted family members who do not want to hear their weight <laughs> said, you can have them just turn off the volume. Or you can turn it back on for you. And again, this is toward the back right of the scale. So it's underneath the standing platform and it's kind of in a little corner here. There's a little lip where the platform is. You'll move your hand toward the back right. It's just underneath there on the flat part of the scale. This is what it sounds like at full volume. I'm just gonna press my hand firmly on it. 12.8 pound. Ready for operation. So she has a slight accent, but she's very, very clear. And that's the full volume. I like to turn it down just a smidge more than that, but for the podcast's sake, I'll just leave it there. I'm gonna show you languages. So I'm just gonna press the button multiple times, the button next to the knob. And I need to press my hand on it again. Press the button again. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just showing you the languages. I'm going to press my hand on it. Next language. Cuatro coma seis kilogramo. Listo para funcionar. That's Spanish. So we had Greek, Croatian, Spanish. Pressing the button again. This should be German. Vier coma six kilogram. Das Gerät ist betriebsbereit. Yep, that's Deutsch. And if I press one more time, we should be back to English. 10.0 pound. Ready for operation. And there it is. So it gives you just a second, and it doesn't take long at all to calibrate itself. So that gives you an idea. And it just did the auto shut off sound. Not sure you could hear that. So if you, in fact, need to have yourself weigh and then weigh someone else, I would wait until the auto shutoff happens and then just do it again. Calibrate. And it'll come back on. It doesn't tell you it's ready, so like I said, give it a second. 12.4 pound. And you'll be able to weigh. Ready for operation. So it's very cool. If you have something that's very light and you're trying to weigh it, it won't work on this scale. You cannot measure your food, for instance, on this scale. It won't work. So if you have anything that's under like five, six pounds, it's probably not going to work. So this is definitely a body weight scale. Also worth noting, it does not have any fancy schmancy features. I looked at a lot of Bluetooth scales and scales with BMI and scales with lots of things, and I ended up saying, you know what, I can get those stats other places. I'm just going to get a handy-dandy bathroom scale. And that's what I ended up doing. So I paid $32 for it. This is tempered glass. 
and it's got nice stainless steel accents according to the Amazon description. And it, as you can see, it's very easy to use for anyone. I'm totally blind. I have no need for lots of complication when I'm utilizing a scale something that I know I need to be as accurate as possible. So I really like this. I like the voice. I like the durability. I like the fact that it's made out of high grade material. You can really tell that when you step on it and I just like it. So I'm gonna try my weight experiment here for you. I have three weights. I have a five pound, a two pound, and a three pound weight. And I'm just going to set them on the scale and hope that nothing rolls off. Ooh, here comes my five pound. And that's apparently not enough to wake it up. So I'm just gonna center everything as best I can here. And sure enough, it's trying to roll around on me. The big five pound one is. And now I'm just going to hold one steady with my hand and calibrate it with my hand. 10.6 pound. And it says it's 10.6 pounds, which is probably pretty close to what this actually is. So I'm going to just move it back a smidge on the scale. Ready for operation. And I'm going to let it go off. 11.8 pound. Oh, and in fact, I didn't have to let it go off. It just did it for me. And I'm just going to move them back just a smidge more. And it went off. So I'm going to calibrate it again. 11.8 pounds. And 11.8. That is probably more accurate. So that goes back to what I was saying about Ready for operation. making sure that when you put something on the scale like yourself, <laughs> you want to make sure to stand closer with your heels closer toward the back of the scale. Because this is 10 pounds. These weights are not a really good thing to use either. I have close to a full gallon of milk. I suppose I could try that, but it's not full. And so I know what the weight of a full gallon of milk is, but I would not want to test it just based on guesstimation. But it gives you an idea. One other thing to note, if you need to store your scale on its side or you need to move it regularly, it could impact your weigh-ins. So just give it a few minutes or sit it overnight or something if you can to kind of let it get back in the groove. And it may give you a better weigh-in. The Amazon page for this particular scale warns that it has very delicate machinery in it and you don't want to move it around much. So mine, as do many people's, lives in the bathroom. We are, we are having this cozy chat. <laughs> I hope you found this interesting. I hope it's helped you to possibly make a decision about whether or not it's something that you would like to have. Thanks for listening. I hope this has been helpful. Again, this is the Taylor Talking Scale, and the link will be provided in the show notes. And please do keep in mind that we do earn a small commission if you purchase directly from us and our links provided on mysticaccess.com. We only strive to provide you with links to products that we have either tried and enjoyed ourselves or that have been recommended highly to us by people we know and trust. And we appreciate you trusting us for resources. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. I won't really talk too much about my scale, but I have a scale that I've had for quite some time. It has a man's voice and it does the, the body fat count and all that stuff. But what mine does is it will insult you. <laughs> See, I don't want to be insulted. Leave it to you. Uh -huh. Yeah, leave it to you yeah. to have a scale like that the, insults you. This is like the carrot app of scales. Yes. Have you ever heard of carrot the apps on the phone? So it insults you. What does it say? One time it says there's somebody else on here with you. Ow. <laughs> That's just wrong. See, I would cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and but I think all scales, all talking scales, have a mean streak in them anyway or they're just possessed because it seems like when your weight goes down or no one is around to hear, they whisper. When your weight goes up and someone's around or you don't want them to hear your weight, they shout. I used to have this scale. My very first talking scale was a male voice and it had like five buttons on it and I had it in college. And so I would press the button, start the process, step on the scale, and when it said your weight is, I moved at this amazing rate of speed. I jumped off the scale and <laughs> literally just about kicked that scale under the bed with my foot so that it would muffle the weight. And it was like, people would say to me, I hear your scale saying, your weight is, oh, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. My work here is done. <laughs> They need talking scales with headphone jacks. I've said it for a long time, but I will continue to say it. If you had Lisa's Bluetooth scale, you could have a headphone jack on your phone. Or on your phone, you can do that, yes. Why, yep. That's why I've really embraced the Bluetooth thing because, well, A, I have more information, but in my case, more importantly, I feel is I have privacy.
Yes. And, you know, it doesn't really matter how much you weigh. It doesn't matter if you're underweight or overweight or right in the middle. You know, you have the right to have that information private. Yep. And so I love that we do have more options. Now I don't have to smother my scale. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, absolutely. I have a question regarding your scale, actually, too. Does your scale synchronize off to HealthKit? Yes. That's cool. And it also actually seems to synchronize with my fitness pal because oh, when I, nice. uh, yesterday was the first day I weighed on the scale. When I weighed yesterday, it adjusted my weight in my fitness pal. Oh, see, that's nice. That's yeah. very nice. That's very yeah. nice. Very nice. I may have to get one and get, retire my scale that insults me. I just want to say as a disclaimer and perhaps a caveat to those of you listening and you're thinking, gosh, you're talking about scales and that makes me nervous and I'm thinking about my own health right now and blah. Please remember that while the number on the scale does have importance, it's one equation in the big picture. There is a lot of other things going on that will determine and assist and support you in your health. The number on the scale is only one of them. So please, when you see the number and it's not where you want it, remember, there's lots of other factors in place as well. Take it from someone who's stressed over her weight for the last three months trying to get to a better spot. So. And you know, the experts, quote the experts, oh, say, yes. you shouldn't weigh yourself, but more than once a week, once a, week. Once a month, or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't find that that works well for me. And this is just me personally. We're not medical people. No. Uh, disclaimer all. and all that. Absolutely, <laughs> right. But for me, it's like, if I'm waiting for that once a week number, then if on that day, by chance, I'm up a half a pound, that colors everything. Yes, it does. So, I just try, now I don't do it every morning, but most mornings, I just get on the scale, see where I am, and get off. And seeing that number every day kind of takes some of its power away. It's still an important number to watch, but it's not important all caps. (laughs) Absolutely. It's kind of back to some of the coaching work we've done and that we talk about how, you know, the story you tell yourself about something isn't necessarily what it is. And... You know, just because the scale shows that you're up three-tenths of a pound on a given day does not mean you are. Yeah, uh, and the thing is, too, is it it could change throughout the day, too. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, absolutely. Women particularly. We have a lot of changes throughout the day and the month. (laughs) And that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at your scale. I even read something that said the lunar cycle will actually shift your weight. I'm not surprised. That makes sense. Like gravity. Absolutely. I lived for a while in a house that I was in the basement and if you looked at the floor apparently it was completely flat. But I could feel with my feet that there were hills and valleys. Mm -hmm. And depending on where I set my scale it changed my weight by like five pounds. Um, And I was reading reviews of Bluetooth scales on Amazon and people were saying Unless you have a completely flat floor, you're going to have a lot of variation. You know, somebody was saying, I have tile floor, or I live in an old house with wood floors, and there are little hills and valleys and things. And so it can vary, but I love that there's more technology out there that gives us options. Although it's not much on portability, but I wouldn't mind having one of those old braille scales. They had these, man, it was cool. I saw it a couple times. It had a waist-high dial, so you didn't have to bend down and do contortions to read your weight, but they seemed to be accurate. They seemed to give you the same weight all the time, and they were built like tanks. I mean, they were just really solid and sturdy and very reliable, and because it was a dial that you felt or a, a pointer that you felt, you didn't have privacy, so they were pretty cool, too. Speaking of Braille and portability, we hope you will join us for our next Mystic Access podcast. We have an international guest who will be joining us in the castle, and those are the only hints I'm going to give about the next upcoming podcast, so we hope you will join us for that because it's going to be fun. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful summer. Bye now. Bye. Bye. The preceding podcast is a presentation of Mystic Access, where the magic is in learning. To contact us, please visit www.mysticaccess.com. Call us, 716-543-3323, and press 2 to reach our Mystic Access podcast comment line.
Email us at show at mysticaccesspodcast.com and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mysticaccess. Would you like to spread the word about our podcasts? Please tell your friends and colleagues to visit us at www.mysticaccesspodcast.com. If you enjoy what you hear on our podcasts, feel free to leave us an iTunes rating and review. We certainly appreciate those. Also, you may feel free to use our podcasts in your own RSS feed. Just be sure that all of our contact information is left intact. Thanks for spreading the word, and thanks for listening. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode.